Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for the 9th of September of 2022. All right. Just checking emails here really quick. I think we have some questions here. Um, if you are attending live, please do jump over onto the chat if you want to talk to anybody. Um, got some great people in here that always have great information to share and additions to the questions. Um, and then if you have any questions, please do drop them over onto the questions tab. And if you are watching on YouTube or after the fact, if you would like to join us live, just sign up for our newsletter at twistedsage.com. All right. Well, as always, we have a group of wonderful peeps on here today from Minnesota, Colorado, Georgia, Southern Cali, Lithuania. Hey, fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and, um, pardon me, distracted, getting ready for uh, leaving for a holistic fair here in just a few minutes. Well, as soon as we're done here. So just been kind of on the run. So would love to, hmm, sorry, still looking at my emails here while we're all settling in and everybody's landing here. Um, hey, Kim from Virginia. Oh, yeah, Ted, say there's, um, gosh, uh, there was a question in regards to the standard 202 econ unit, the STU measure and the information with that. Um, yeah, I will have to find where that, uh, where that link goes. Um, I know you emailed me about that or wrote on social media, just haven't had time to dig in, try to find where that link goes, but, um, would love to get that information out there. We're, we're in the process. Um, of revisioning the website and, and the tools and everything, everything, everything. So um, that's something that we do want to do is to be able to get that information um, where it can all be found in one place, the information on the different qubits and the different energetics. So let's see. I know I had a couple of questions here on email. But, you know, my phone is being really funny today, so I'm just going to shut this down and turn it off. And sorry if we didn't get to your question today on email. Um, I'll still look for it here on the computer as we roll along here. Um, anyway. Hey, from, from the beautiful land of Oz. Welcome from Australia. And the East Coast. Um, and let's see. And so basically for our 50 questions Friday, um, Ted, I see we're asking some questions here. You know, we, we usually don't cover the topic of construction, um, for tensor rings and for things like that. We're basically doing this for, um, the consciousness work questions and the questions on the tools for those who, who have, or are looking to get the tools. Um, so I can answer a quick question though. Um, so you're asking about using separate pieces of wire. Um, you have to use a single piece because when you fold it, it creates a counter uh, counter flow of piezoelectric energy. So, um, you know, I implore anybody who is considering working with tensor rings, uh, creating tensor rings. We have a really old video on sacredmeasures.com. Uh, Slim wanted me to put a video out years ago and so it gives some basics but really um my the first 50 rings that i made i had some that were non-beneficial some that didn't work some that worked on only one side um, because i was looking at the creation of these tools from a physical scientific standpoint these are higher dimensional creations. What sets our tools apart from all other tools is the etheric templates. That is where the true magic and power of these tools are. 
the reason that half of my rings didn't work or were creating non-beneficial energies out of the first 50 that I made was simply that I was riddled with entities. I was in the head. Um, I had no clue about subtle energy or consciousness or, or any of the things. I was looking at it from a scientific standpoint as a traumatized human. And so, you know, creating tensor rings is more than just the physical aspect. It is very much the energetic, but you do have to have the physical perfected first. So, um, yeah, please do check out sacredmeasures.com, Ted, if you are um, looking for some more questions there on, on creation, because, you know, not, not everybody can can pull this off. Um, and of course, anyway, um, Hey, Dan can say, um, mm, I would sure implore you to not, um, ask for money while you are here. I know that I get a lot of emails and everything for people to support you with your organite projects, but, um, please don't do that here on, on chat. Thank you. Let's let's take a minute and walk into the heart space, um, because this whole um, this fifty questions Friday is more than just us getting together and chatting and asking questions and things like that. There is an entire there is a large container that is created. It's like a sacred space. And when we all go into the heart space and we come together through the heart space in the sacred space, it's pretty flipping magical, um, you know, and every time we do one of these 50 questions Fridays, it gets to be more of a potent space. So um, I ask for us to all jump into the heart space. Okay, so just putting your attention to your physical heart and imagining connecting to the heart of the earth, to that crystal sun within the earth, and just breathe in that light, that unconditional loving, supporting energy up through the feet and into the heart. just allowing that energy of the earth to come up through and she just starts to act like a sponge for a lot of the things and just starts to pull it away. Next, we connect to our higher light, source, soul, creator, God, you as the central sun in creation. And we breathe in that light, that support into the heart. And as we take that breath, we breathe both those energies together within the heart, grounded, connected. So now then let's step into this sacred space as we all are holding the space together, our souls, those who walk with us. Just taking in that deep breath and just stepping into the sacred space. Beautiful. All right. So, um, Gosh, we'll go ahead and start taking some questions here. Uh, Kim, when will the quantum grid points be available? Um, we have, uh, gosh, so the quantum grid points and the rainmakers and everything that requires the echopoxy, um, we were waiting to get our echopoxy back in. It's back in now. So next week I will be busy in the pour room back here um, and we'll get the, um, the Rainmaker plate and the quantum grid points um, back in stock. Uh, we just didn't want to 
make you guys wait for them. So this weekend, um, Kim, <clears throat> I'll put those back in stock and just make sure that I give a heads up on that page that it still might be a little bit of a delay as we get caught up here. So um, let's see. And emailed um gosh yeah and so i know kim's mentioning um that she emailed billy and hadn't heard back please do try to email her again we got caught up in literally a thousand emails and and such over the past you know through august during our sale and so we've done really good at keeping everything organized um and such, but please do send Billy an email again um, within your questions there in regards to an order. So I know we're we're finally having room to breathe again. So um, let's see. Uh, Kendall, I have an original one half heavy duty wisdom ring on the website. It says that this ring was not updated to the new energy, but you have said all wisdom tools were updated what is really the info? Uh, well, what it really is, yes, truly all the wisdom tools and the new energy um, are all updated currently, you know, to, to their highest potentials. Um, the website, gosh, we really need to go through and, and uh, well, I need to go through every single page on the website and clear up a lot of the old information because I mean, gosh, you can probably go to the Harmony Ring page from 2017 or whatever, and it'll say, oh, this is absolutely the best ring that's ever been made in the highest potentials, all that stuff. Um, because as we have grown the website and the tools and the energetics throughout these years, I have not been very vigilant on going through and cleaning up everything. So that is one of the things that we're going to do here after we um, figure out which products we are keeping, which ones we are letting go, and and the energetics to each of these tools. Um, once we kind of get things figured out here over this next, hopefully this next week, um, now that we're caught up and have some some room to to think about things, we we're going we're going to be going through and redoing um, the content, the information on the website and and all the products. So anyway, thank you for your patience and understanding with that as we continue to work on um, the website and the tools. So um, uh, hey, Renard, yep. Um, so let's see. Um, Renard, a question. I have a silver chalice ring nested over a nice size quartz crystal, and it doesn't seem to want to let it go. <laughs> Just sharing. <laughs> yes, you know, um, so I would try, you know, the crystals do absolutely love the chalice. Um, and the chalice out of the water set here is this particular ring. Um, so what I would try, uh, Renard, is to put a wisdom ring over the crystal and see if that shifts it to where it can hold its own without wanting to have the chalice ring with it. But I do know that the crystals absolutely love the tools, but the wisdom rings are amazing on how they shift the tools or how they shift crystals oh, and tools. So... Um, Let's see, Ed's asking, will stacking the rings in sequence compound the energy? Yes, so what we found years ago was is that you take a single tensor ring and you add another and it increases the potency by 23%. You know, now potency is kind of a interesting word because, you know, it's not that it's um, makes, okay, so, what we mean by increasing the potency is is that basically the energetics is going to be the same the field the tensor field and everything that you find within the field is going to be the same whether you have one ring two rings um a one inch ring a 29 inch ring in comparison to each other no matter how you stack them 
or add them up, the field is going to be exactly the same. Now, what I mean by the potency. So when we have a lighter gauge ring versus a heavier gauge ring, you know, something of this nature, the heavier gauge ring is more potent in that you can feel it more on the physical. But again, the field, the energetics is going to be exactly the same, the same potentials and possibilities found within each ring. But the potency, how you feel it on the physical will be more with a heavier gauge as well as when you start to stack rings. Now, when you have something such as the, um, sorry, I lost my thoughts here. Um, when you have something such as the um, alchemist sets, so the alchemist sets are something that has the three different energetics. It has the harmonizer for the outside ring, and then it has the chalice, and then it has the divine I am. The three together are creating something greater than the sum. Now, that's the same with the harmonic creation field trio, which is the golden fire ring, the harmony ring, and the um, regeneration ring. So those three create a field that is more than the sum of the three. And so when you're stacking rings in this fashion, um, Ed, it's really a fantastic way to go because you are creating um, different harmonics. Now, like at Dancing with Water, they talk about how, you know, when they've worked with Slim, and Slim's talked about how it is creating um, harmonics that are working better um, because it's just holding a different field. So the, um, the Alchemist Rings are actually, today is our last day for the Alchemist Rings as the tool of the week. And if you have not, gotten alchemist rings it is a perfect opportunity today to do that before midnight tonight um, you get 16 percent off on our tool of the week sale which is a fantastic deal but the alchemist set of rings are they're phenomenal um you know and these are the water rings now the water rings again is the same energetic as the personal alchemist set which are the same size but the alchemist set is a heavier gauge than the water rings. So energetically, those two are the same, but when you, when you feel it on the physical, the alchemist set is more potent. Um, water does not require that physical potency. Um, so that is why we use a lighter gauge for the water rings versus that heavier gauge because water just does not need that. Um, so anyway, yes, adding the rings and any of the tools too. So that's it is a lot of people send in photos of the tools that they create or, you know, combinations that they put together where they feel it's really good. So, you know, play with the tools for certain. Um, let's see, Nika, would gluing a set of alchemist rings to the bottom of an absorbent coaster interfere with the energetics? I lost one of my three to another dimension. Ha ha. <laughs> that happens a lot. Um, these tools will disappear. Um, and they usually come back. I forgot and stood up and I was stood up and one was just gone. It's been weeks and I ordered a replacement. I'm sure it'll pop into this dimension sometime. <laughs> yeah. Whether they oscillate in and out of this reality or else there are a lot of times there's other beings that will come in and take them and utilize them you know, shift them into their plane, utilize them, bring them back. So you can, you know, simply ask for them back. Somebody asked me the other day, well, gosh, people ask all the time, how, what is it that I can do to help bring my tools back? And, um, you know, just asking, just stating to the universe, Hey, I'd like my tools back, please. <laughs> you know? So, um, but sorry, going back to your question here, Nika. So would gluing a set of alchemist rings to the bottom of a coaster interfere with the energetics? No, it will not. It doesn't matter if you're, if you have toxic glue, whatever, because within that field of the rings, it cleans and clears anything. It will not send that in the field up through it. So if you're adding something to the field, um, only what is in the highest and best good is brought through. The rest is harmonized, alchemized, cleared. Um, 
Let's see. Oh, good morning. Does the healing hands ring work passively? I have taped one or two of the healing hand rings over a problem area, then ignored the ring and the problem, but I got some benefit. So yes. So what happens when, so if you use those rings and you tape that onto, um, you know, say you tape one on each side of your knee, you right there, you have the intention of working with the knee of the healing, the clearing. So your soul knows that intention. So basically these rings, especially the healing hands are working with the soul. The soul is the one that's in charge. So when you tape those rings, you just like ace bandage or whatever, and you put that on either side of your knee, if that's what you're working on, the intention is already there. And it's better to have that style of soft intention, allowing your soul to carry and hold that intention for you. Because we as the human, if we sit there and we focus our attention and intention onto that, we're usually limiting the field. So because from when we're coming from that space of having our attention onto there, if we're not in that heart space and allowing the soul to do the work we're limiting the potentials and possibilities that can come out of that so it is absolutely perfect that you put it on there you have your intention from the heart what it is that you're wanting to work on releasing clearing healing harmonizing then forget it just let it go and let your soul do the work so basically those rings are simply holding the space for your soul to come in more. It's, they're just, a, it's like a sacred space. And um, so, yeah, you can totally use those rings passively as well. Again, when you actively use the rings, because I would almost argue that you're actively using them because you've placed them there and then you just take your attention off of it and allow whatever is to happen in the highest and best. Uh, let's see. Question. What cubits are made of the chalice, harmonizer, divine I am, golden fire, alchemy, wisdom, and Taurus? So, um, we use cubit measures, yes, but the cubit measures are simply a space holder for the higher dimensional aspect of the tools to come in. The chalice energy can be held in any cubit measure. The divine I am can too. The golden fire is very specific to a cubit measure, but it's not the cubit measure that brings through the golden fire. It is the etheric template, the higher dimensional aspect of that tool that I as a master builder have been creating for lifetimes. And that now that my sister has, um, you know, my sister and I in this lifetime co-create the rest of the energetics of these tools they're housed in what we call the etheric templates, which is this space, this higher dimensional space that's in a bubble, under a pyramid, under a bubble, and it is very well guided, guarded, protected. We have a, um, a guardian of these etheric templates to ensure that they always stay clean and clear. So it is that higher dimensional aspect of the tools that we create, which brings in you know, all these energetics that you're referring to, the, the alchemist, um, the golden fire. Within those etheric templates are such things as the frequencies, properties, consciousness of all the plant, crystal, and mineral kingdoms of earth. There is also all the different rays of light that we utilize. There are several modalities that are in there, um, you know, things that my sister and I have discovered along the way as well as such things as like um, soul body fusion. Um, there's, it, it's like this giant toolbox for the soul. And so it is the soul that decides what comes through the field in the highest and best good for you as the human right here and now. So when you pick up a ring, what you receive at any given moment may change in the next moment, depending on what it is that you need. So all these newer rings like, um, you know, the wisdom rings and the alchemist rings, these are all 
such a larger bandwidth of potentials within them where like the harmony ring or um you know some of the others had a smaller bandwidth of potential available within them you know but now then all these newer rings build upon every tool that we've created so all these newer rings like the wisdom ring builds upon every energetic that came before it but yet it is so much more expansive um the the, the wisdom and the alchemist rings are really in the new in in the new paradigm um where a lot of these rings were in the paradigm previous so like um yeah so basically the cubit measures and the energetics there's some correlations with some of them and others we can put into any cubit measure so um that's just yeah so it, it's fun to play with that because um yeah i mean we we have rings that you can tell that this one's different from this one and this one yet they can all look the same and be the same cubit measure but there's a different energetic in them um so it, it's it's, 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 I guess it is what it is. Um, JR, I made it, made a do it yourself rainmaker with a nine and a half inch harmonizer, eight and a half inch harmonizer, and a half inch chalet, chalice. Can I secure the tensor coils and the rings with wire or use a plastic fishing line, etc.? Will this still be as effective? Yes. Um, you know, when you, when you put together that rainmaker plate or any of the tools, um, you can use, any material again like it can be you know it can be toxic glues it can be good epoxies i don't know if there's really any good ones um it can be um you know copper wire steel wire fishing line it does not matter it's not going to affect the 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 energetics of the tools whatsoever so um yes how ever you feel to assemble that rainmaker especially um you can do it anyway uh lizzie will the wisdom ring work as well as the wi-fi ring to amplify healing the body with a laser the small wisdom ring just fits my laser better than the wi-fi ring so it makes using them together easier so you know um it is phenomenal to use the tensor fields with lasers um Gosh, I have quite a few little blazers over the years still laying around that are just stacked with tensor rings on them. Um, and, you know, I'm just taped them all on. So, um, but as far as which ring works best for the lasers, you know, the wisdom ring is, again, the most expansive, broad, grounding, connecting, energetic that we have currently and it's going to keep expanding because we've reached a new plateau with the wisdom rings that basically we're not going to come out with new qubits you know anytime soon well there's something special coming through i thought we were on this nice plateau but <laughs> there's something bigger coming through when we're ready for it um but the wisdom ring is yes it carries quite a bit more than the current wi-fi ring we will be updating the wi-fi rings at some point in time here as well which then the wi-fi rings will be able to carry the wisdom energetics but currently they are the golden fire and the harmonizer basically the wi-fi rings and the cell phone tabs are it's kind of a combination of everything that is in the highest and best right now so that's kind of where we brought everything together for those but um for using with the lasers yes i would suggest using the wisdom ring um just because it's the most phenomenal but truly the wi-fi ring with the golden fire and all the energetics there is still a most wonderful fantastic tool so don't you know don't disregard any of your harmony or golden fire tools or anything in that nature because they are all super fantastic still um you know 
we're still going to keep those energies around the harmony and the golden fire are very similar to each other right now um you know but the um but we'll still keep those energetics around because a lot of people are drawn to those so um anyway uh nika do the grid point pyramids carry the alchemist rings energy or would they benefit or amplify by placing a pocket set on the pyramid so any of the pyramids whether it's the um, quantum grid points or the ascension grid pyramids or any of the ascension pyramids uh, like behind me here these all are constantly updated with the, the newest energetic so all of the pyramids that we create are housing the the, the most recent and newest energetics um, now adding a pocket alchemist set to it it does feel really good it's um you know usually with my um ascension grid point pyramid i usually do have a pocket set on mine um and even the quantum grid points so, which i was looking around for one in my rings i don't know where they're at but um yeah i still love to add the rings to them just because it just it adds more potency let's say we'll use that that keyword or that that term potency that it just makes the field feel um and perceive a, per, you perceive the field stronger if you add those rings <clears throat> uh bendy does the new taurus pendant nest inside the divine i am activator pendant hmm how do you see this combination working so the Taurus pendant um, that we have right now, which we are currently out of stock on, um, we're out of stock on a lot of the silver right now, but that Taurus pendant has a bale that is welded onto it. And so that bale won't nest within the Divine I Am activator pendant. Though we are certainly considering releasing, so this is, this is the new Taurus pendant, but it does not have the bale. What I've done with this is I have put a lanyard through it and put my silver wand on it. So I absolutely love this. And it's like a, you know, it's like a, one of those, what do they call those bullens or whatever. But um, we're certainly considering releasing these without the bale as well. And if we do that, then yes, this most certainly should fit inside of that Divine I Am Activator Pendant. And yeah, I'm not sure what all that would do, but it feels rather potent. Um, so yeah, just kind of watch here as we move forward. And I believe that um, we will have these released at, without the bail so that um, people can do you know things like this with it which i find phenomenal uh christine i need two knee replacements and have set a wisdom wand on top of my knee and balanced a healing hands ring on each end so that one is on either side of my knee because of the coiled ring around the wand would this move the energy more any other tools you would recommend for my knees so with the with the okay so will the wand move the energy more now when you have the two rings there you're creating that field and so using using the healing hands or or the wisdom rings the wisdom rings that you have is absolutely perfect um, using those two wisdom rings on the knee that's going to be creating that field now when you use the wand if you use the wand actively to move the energy um, always oh, i usually have a full size wand in my pocket so if you use the ring or the wand and you're just wanding it you will run energy you will be moving energy more um so again to me i uh, i love the wisdom wand that is absolutely my favorite tool um so having the full size wisdom wand is is what i would suggest to use actively by just wanting it but then so you don't want to get too involved with it because basically the whole concept of healing with these tools is 
set it and forget it, to get out of the way. Because when we continue to try to heal something, we are fighting it, we are keeping it in existence. So that's really a tough one when you are dealing with something, you know, that affects you so much because you really want it to be healed. And it's like you have your, you know, God, you know, I'm going to fight this thing until I'm healed. And um, that just cr that creates a field and intention to keep it in place. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I don't have all the words and, and, and everything to explain that whole concept and to walk you through that at this moment. Um, but it's, it's just about, you know, put your rings there, hold that field, run some energy to it, and then trust your soul because your soul is the one that does the healing work. We're holding the space, we're creating the fields, but it is your soul that does the work. And so do your work from the heart space, but then let go, trust your soul to do the work and get out of the way and allow, allow the soul to go through and clear the source of everything that is that creation. Because usually that source goes back to probably not even this lifetime but to all other spaces and places where that trauma, where that agreement, where everything began. And so when you step out of the way, your soul can go through and do the work. Um, so, you know, that's, that's really the biggest thing is getting out of the way and trusting your soul to take care of it. Uh, Kim, I wonder how many of you speak to and thank the soul of your tools. They like to speak. <laughs> That's beautiful, Kim. That really is. Um, you know, uh, communing with your tools is phenomenal. Communing with all energies, crystals, um, pets, plants. You know, that's something, um, you know, that's something that is absolutely beautiful and phenomenal. And you'll probably never get bored in this lifetime and enjoy life. <laughs> that's phenomenal, Kim. So, um, but yeah, totally do speak to your tools. Um, because they are, these tools are in service to you. They truly are. So ask your tool to be in service to you. Um, yeah. Okay. So whoops, I got a question here. Kim, they are holy beings, you know, and they truly are because especially the newer tools, it is you that comes through. Um, it's you, your light aspects, facets of your soul. So these are space holders to allow your light, your consciousness, your soul to come in more, which is the most beautiful thing because your soul has your best interest in mind versus working with anything that's outside of you. Your soul is a part of you. Um, just jumping over here to chat and seeing what's happening. Um, well, let's see questions. Okay. So, um, I do have uh, another announcement too, and I don't know if, if any of you have seen, but we are having a wisdom wand webinar next Friday. So instead of 50 questions Friday, next Friday, it's going to be the wisdom wand webinar. I'm super, super excited about this one because we've done, you know, some light anchoring and things with the wisdom one, but it was a little bit more convoluted and, and confusing than anything. Um, so the, the wisdom wand webinar is going to be this next Friday 
and we're doing the tool of the week on the full size wisdom wand again a fantastic deal for that wand um so if you don't have your wand yet and you would like to join the webinar you have time to get it to you um so when you go on uh, if you go to the wisdom wand and again it's only the full size wisdom wand that we have as the tool of the week next week but we already have the coupon code there which is ww at checkout to get that 16 percent off of the wisdom wand now again um, absolutely my most favorite tool and it is one of the most powerful tools to utilize and there's so much potential to the wisdom wands and it, you know and it doesn't matter if if it's the silver wisdom wand or a wisdom wand pendant in silver or copper or the miniature wisdom wand or the full-sized wisdom wand they all hold the same energetic the same field the same potentials and possibilities what i like about that full-size wisdom wand as we were discussing here is the potency of it that you can it's more of a tangible field on the physical when you're using the wand or even just holding it or carrying it on the person um you know you just perceive it more um but if you're super sensitive or if you truly are don't need your mind to wrap around the larger wand dependence or the silver wisdom wand are absolutely perfect and appropriate to use during this webinar because again it is the higher dimensional part the etheric the the energetic part of that wisdom wand that we are working with in this webinar and if you don't have a wisdom wand it is okay still come to the webinar because like all of our tools they don't exist here just in the physical this is the anchor for the true tool which is energetic etheric quantum it exists on the higher dimensional plane so the point being is is that you can access the energy of this tool without having to have the physical one most people well no sorry you can feel into the energy of the tools and access the energetics by just feeling into it being in the heart space setting with it setting with the picture or the thought of it the memory of it by seeing it from seeing it or um and basically that's your attunement to it and then once you know that energy you can utilize that energy consciously to do the work that we're going to do with it so but anyway next friday um wisdom wand webinar and of course it is always recorded and will be put on youtube um and and elsewhere so don't worry if you're not here live but if you are here live um we'll be taking questions at the end of the wisdom wand webinar so um let's see uh, Nicole, can you talk about how to use the wisdom wand for working with dragons and other beings? Yeah, most certainly. Um, you know, the wisdom wand, basically, because the wisdom wands contain that energetic of the fairy wands, the shaman wands, the golden fire and light wands, and the dragon wands, you can simply access that energy through an intention. So when you go into the heart and you're holding your wisdom wand, what I do with like the dragon wands is I just imagine making this big circle to create this giant field around me. When you create this field, you're just having the intention of accessing the energetics of the dragon wand. It creates the field where all those higher aspects of the dragons are there and available. Um, so that's, that's how you access that field to begin working with the dragons. From there, whether you see or feel them or not, just start communicating. Um, start communing, communicating with those beings because you are in a safe, sacred space. And they're only there for the highest and greatest good. And the dragons usually don't work with the human. They work with the soul. You know, they don't really care about human affairs because this is all an illusion and it's all part of our part of our thing that we're doing here. But with the soul, they will work with the soul. So, um, but the human is, you know, we're the physical anchor. We're the ones who are making the intention from the heart space. And then the dragons, the soul, all work together. 
Um, and we'll go in more depth and detail, or else you also can check out, uh, Nicole, the Dragon Wand. I'm pretty sure we have a Dragon Wand webinar, and that can walk you through some of that too. Uh, Chris, when using the Rainmaker, can a Gaia Sphere be placed inside of another Gaia Sphere and then placed on the Rainmaker to amplify the effects of both Gaia Spheres? Um, so, yes, basically it's kind of like the, the tensor field generators where you can take one energetic and then another energetic and place them together. And they're going to be creating, you know, a, a whole nother field. They'll, they'll be bringing the energetics of each of those together. Um, it, I'm hesitant to say that if it would increase, you know, the, the size of the field or necessarily the potency, but it would just bring another energetic component to it. Um, really when you're working with that rainmaker and you have a single Gaia sphere, um, putting your attention onto it with the intention of expanding the field greater or bringing in whatever it is that your intentions are for that, whether, you know, it's your intention to, um, you know, magnetize and work with rain or work with weather in general or for, um, you know, whatever your intended purpose is with working with that, when your attention is on there, that expands it greatly too. Um, and you can anchor a column of light into it and have your intention in that column of light and that will sit and hold your intention as well. Um, so such as the divine I am Gaia sphere inside the regeneration Gaia sphere. Um, yeah, the, I, I like, I like the feel of that combo. Um, and you know, I, I said a few weeks ago, we would have out the, the newer Gaia sphere, which is, um, a five and a half inch, um, wisdom Gaia. And we will, we're still kind of working on, you know, organizing everything here for the website and finding what we're actually going to name this thing. But, um, you know, you can change the energetics of a Gaia sphere or a tensor field generator by simply putting in another ring. So if you have a small wisdom ring, I took all my cool rings off my table here, but let's say, so here, for instance, we have the harmonic creation field trio. We have a harmonizer ring here on the outside, but then when we add this divine I am ring to it, it changes the energetics. Same as if we have this this tensor field generator here, this one is in the wisdom and we bring a golden fire ring inside of it. Now then besides just the wisdom field, that golden fire energetic is coming through a little bit more tangibly. Um, so with the Gaia spheres too, and the tensor field generators, when even the field of a ring, adding different energetics is going to give you something more than what it was that you started with. So yeah, please do play. Uh, can the harmony tensor field generator be placed inside the alchemist rings to amplify the effects of the alchemy rings? So yes, basically if you take your set of alchemist rings and you put a generator inside of it, what you are doing, whew, yeah, um, you know, when the alchemist rings first came about and that divine I am generator came about, I was seeing the alchemist rings as like a docking station for that, for that divine I am generator and that it would just sit in there and it would amplify everything. And it's like, it's like you could take that generator out. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't even know. Cause I just remember that there was something really special about utilizing that tensor field generator and the alchemist rings together. Like I say, it just it felt like a docking station that you sit it there and it just amplifies everything. So totally when you use the alchemist sets with any of the tools, it amplifies everything because it is basically the wisdom energetics. The wisdom energetics amplifies everything, but the, um, the alchemist rings, to me, I think are more phenomenal than just a single wisdom ring. 
the alchemist rings are because of the three not only is that bringing the potency but there's just something more about having these three the the set of alchemist rings the alchemist set versus just a wisdom ring um so yeah i really love the alchemist sets uh, can the wisdom wand be used to connect with other tensor tools from a distance? Ye totally. You know, you can with the with the wisdom wand, um, you can send that field anywhere, anywhere that you know. I mean, even if you've seen a picture of a place, you can then know that place and send the energy there. So if you know a specific crystal somewhere or a specific tool somewhere, so like let's say Aunt Martha has a harmony generator sitting in her house. Go into your heart space, imagine that harmony generator, use your wisdom wand, if that's what you're using, imagining just wanding that generator and it's going to amplify it. So yes, you can totally access. And of course, everything is always done in the highest and best. So that's the same when we upgrade the tools. If it is in the highest and best for the person who owns it, the upgrade will happen. Um, so everything's always in the highest and best, especially when we're coming from the heart and working with the field of the tools. Hey, Brenda, I have the original silver Taurus pendant. Does it have the new energy? Oh, the original silver Taurus pendant. Oh, um, no, that one was the harmonic creation field trio is what the original silver Taurus was, was the harmonic creation field trio, um, which is still a pretty fantastic Taurus. Um, but, you know, you can, you can add a wisdom ring to that. And I'm not sure if one of our smaller wisdom rings, that small one and a half inch one, if that would nest in with that Taurus pendant or not. Um, I'll do some looking into that for you, Brenda, to see if there is, um, you know, an addition that we can add to that to, um, you know, to potentize it some more for you or to shift the energetics. Um, all right. Jumping back over here to chat and see what's happening. Yay. All right. Um, let's see. And a couple more questions here. Uh, Brenda, mine. Um, okay, so your silver Taurus pendant has a regeneration ring and the golden fire ring. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, let me let me sit with that one sometime here, Brenda, and, and we can see what we can work out. I guess, you know, it almost seems like if you have a, um, like a wisdom wand pendant that was war with it, that it would, I, yeah, I don't know. I, sorry, I can't really look into it right at the moment. Um, Vindy, which tool assists best in bettering our psychic abilities? Um, you know, any of the wisdom fields, um, and I suggest a pendant, um, or else sleeping with the, the larger rings, or, you know, for, for me, when I wanted to have my sight every night before I went to bed, I would ask my soul, for all of the attunements, activations, clearing, everything that I needed to be able to have sight. And it came along. Um, but for, for bettering the psychic abilities, it's, it's being in the heart space, being in that sacred space of the heart. That way you are not caught up in rabbit holes that may or may not be true and in alignment with 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 creation with you um because when we're working from here <clears throat> it's so easy to you know humans are hardwired to make up shit and believe it to be true that's just the way humans are um you know but that's part of the old the old system that we are finally starting to transcend so 
you know, for now, how to bypass that old system is to go into that sacred space of the heart. Do those three breaths to move yourself into the heart space. Then as far as what tool works best for opening up those abilities, it is simply the uncovering. The uncovering is what these tools are doing, is that they're holding the space for us to have a higher, cleaner, clearer connection. That's where you receive all of your innate abilities that we all have, but are just covered up through lifetimes of debris. Um, and so now's the time to start, you know, connecting more with your soul through the heart. And that's where you're going to find all of those beautiful gifts and abilities that we all innately carry. And of course, you know, the tools, if, if you want to, you know, I guess it keeps coming back to wearing a, you know, like a silver, the silver, um, wisdom coil pendant wisdom wand pendant um to me that really is a fantastic one that you can just wear passively or the silver wisdom wand but uh, i guess what presents for you is that silver wisdom wand pendant as one to to wear and um you know and keep it close to you while you sleep at night because during sleep time is really a great time for the allowing of these things to release and to come in so, um, uh, and a cosmic sun disc, because uh, Kim's just a asking a question. I have a cosmic sun disc that I added on one side of the small silver wisdom wand. So that's another one, uh, Vindy. I tell you what, I, I still tell the story that the first time I had the cosmic sun disc and I slept with it right above my head, you know, I put it on the wall so that it was like right down coming towards the top of my head. I swear that I sprained my pineal that night and everything just shifted for me. Um, you know, that cosmic sun disc is a powerful one because of that Taurus that's in it. But so is the, the alchemist Taurus. Um, and so is the do it yourself Taurus. That is also in the alchemist, which gosh, my apologies for everyone that has bought or when wanting that do it yourself Taurus next week, I will get the video done. Yeah, I, I will, I will make the time and get that video done for the do-it-yourself Taurus. But the Taurus really is a great one for opening up everything. Um, but yeah, Kim, that's a great addition to adding, you know, the silver wand because you can have that Taurus and then you can wand it, and it, it just. It, it changes the pattern because the Tauruses are this beautiful pattern of energy that flows out because they are the two Taurus, the toroidal field. And so whatever you input into that, it just, it just carries it. It amplifies it. It, um, to me, it's almost connecting more into that etheric, the, those other planes more because of that toroidal field. Um, so yeah, having, the, the Taurus is really one of the most powerful tools and absolutely love them. Um, oh, and yours is the, the pendant. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Chris, could the new energy bangle be used as a ring for an alchemist set? Um, yes. So basically if you have, um, to create the alchemist set, the, the new energy is the wisdom. So if you have the new energy bangle, that's a wisdom ring. And so basically, if you have, you know, an alchemist set of, or if you have, if you're missing one of the rings of an alchemist set, it does not matter which one it is. You had the wisdom ring in there. And when you add it, you already have the intention right there that it is taking the place of whatever the energetic is that you're missing out of your trio. So you know, if you're wanting to create that, that alchemist set, yeah, just use a wisdom ring in place of one of the rings that you may not have, and it will become the alchemist set. You can even take three wisdom rings, the three and a half, the three inch, and the one and a half, stack them all together with the intention that they're each holding that different energetic of the alchemist rings, and they will hold that energetic for you because the wisdom carries the energetic of every tool that we've created so all you have to do is ask 
for it to carry a specific energetic, and it will. Uh, that's a beautiful thing about the wisdom rings is that they um, they contain everything that's created up to this point. Um, Uh, Kaz, I have the key and it does not spin when placing it on a hook over my bed. Any ideas why? So the the ball bearing on, on the key pendants, there's a little ball bearing that is the swivel. Um, sometimes those can get like, sometimes they get stuck or a little catch in them. Um, just keep spinning it. If it gets a little sticky, um, just keep spinning it until whatever is within that bearing system lodges free and, and it can flow. Um, you know, if you need to maybe put a little drop of like essential oil or jojoba oil or coconut oil or something of that nature and just soak that into that ball bearing and then just keep turning it until it, it opens up and then clean it off. Um, if you absolutely cannot get your key pendant to spin, um, send it back and we will replace that ball bearing on there for you. Um, so yeah, if, if you still have problems with it spinning, you know, after you've tried to loosen it up a little bit or used a little bit of a, a oil in there, um, then please do send it back and we'd be happy to replace that bearing for you. Um, let's see. Uh, whoops, another question here. <clears throat> uh, Kim, so is the wisdom wand carrying the energetics of the quantum grid pyramid? Um, yes, yes. So the wisdom wand is still carrying the same energetics as the pyramid. Well, hmm. Okay, I'll actually have to say, okay. Yes, on the quantum grid points, the quantum grid points are the same energetics as you find with the ascension grid pyramids and on the outside of the ascension pyramids. So the interior of the ascension pyramid is a totally different energy than what emits off the quantum grid point. But what emits off the quantum grid point is the same as what's outside of the ascension pyramids and is also the same that is in the wisdom wands. So yes, the wisdom wands and the quantum grid points and the ascension grid pyramids all do contain that same energetic, the same potentials and possibilities. Um, it's just that the ascension pyramids, once you are on the inside, is where there is so much magic on the interior of those ascension pyramids. Um, but yeah, the wisdom wand will be carrying the same energetics as the quantum grid points, which are, you know, always updated as well. So, um, let's see with, um, <clears throat> With a meditation, um, I think I'm going to, to, I was considering trying to do a meditation here today, but I'm just still a little bit frizzle fried to hold the space. Um, this weekend here, I'm actually off to Casper, Wyoming and so holistic fair. It was the first holistic fair that I did like, oh gosh, 11 years ago or something like that, or 12 years ago. Um, I brought a Gaia sphere, a large Gaia sphere to the holistic fair. And it's first holistic fair I'd ever gone to. And um, I took it in to get an aura reading on it. <laughs> so uh, the, the guy who was doing the aura photography had done all these different crystal skulls. And when he did the aura photography for the Gaia sphere, which I, we have it posted somewhere on the website, you know, he was just blown away. He's like, holy smokes, it's like a spiritual schoolhouse. He's like, energy is coming in and coming out. And it's just amazing. But anyway, so it's this holistic fair that I've always gone back almost every year and supported. Um, you know, we like to we like to support as much of the 
that local style community is possible. Um, so Casper is kind of a special place in Wyoming. Um, I have a lot of history with the energetics there. But anyway, I'll be in Casper, Wyoming this weekend. Um, going to be teaching a workshop tomorrow night. And I was going to use you guys as kind of a, of a test subject here. But like I said, just I'll, I'll definitely share this with you sometime. Um, what we're doing tomorrow night, the name of the workshop is, um, gosh, what is it? Healing with Divine Awareness which is basically what we do almost every one of our get togethers where we do a meditation is um, we step into the heart space, bring our soul in more, and then we simply shine our light on whatever it is that we're clearing. You know, so Brenda just brought up her bowl and played yesterday for, for us at the studio and walked us through um, that meditation as well that she's been doing for the past couple weeks. And so I really don't have a grasp on it right now cognitively to be able to, you know, or energetically to be able to share that with you yet. Um, here in the next couple of weeks, I'll definitely share that with you guys here on 50 Questions Friday, that meditation of using divine awareness for healing. So anyway, um, Fendi, could we redo the attunement to the Wisdom One pendant at the start of next week's webinar? Yeah, so, you know, totally next week during the Wisdom One webinar, we're going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of the, the information stuff, but we're really going to get into the everything with the Wisdom Wand. Um, we'll go in as deep as, as we can. Um, and so, yeah, there's, it's, it's going to be a phenomenal webinar next, next Friday. So, um, I know we do have a cap on the number of people just because of our app here. I think only a hundred people can join at a time. So if you do want to join the webinar live, be sure to get there a few minutes early just to make sure, because, um, I have a feeling it's going to be a, a full webinar. Um, but otherwise, again, it'll be on YouTube afterwards. And really the only benefit of being here live versus afterwards is that you can ask the questions. Otherwise, the container of space, the energy, the information is all going to be the same whether you watch it live or after the fact. You'll still be in the same container of energy. So um, we'll definitely get in deeper with the Wisdom Wands then. All right, you guys, I'm going to jump out of here then. My daughter and I are going to head to Casper and start to get set up and hopefully have some time to go ride some scooters through town tonight. Um, I'll have to take my daughter because this is an excuse to go play more. So anyway, um, for 50 Questions Friday, we'll see you here in two weeks. And otherwise, um, look forward to seeing any of you that decide to show up here for the Wisdom One webinar. It's going to be fantastic. And again, um, today is the last day for the Alchemist set of rings on sale. And um, already you can purchase the full-size Wisdom One for the upcoming webinar, too, if you wish. So um, anyway, two phenomenal, phenomenal tools. Well, thank you all for being here and for the support as always and for the questions and ah, thank you, beautiful souls. I will, we will all see each other next time. All right. Take care.